Hi everyone, my name is Miss Ashley from Be Well Kids Art Academy and for our project today we're going to be taking some random items that we found in our house and use them as stamps. So let's go ahead and get started with our process art project. So here I have some random objects that I found in my house. I've got an old sock because my dog chewed up my the other pair. I've got hair ties, I've got a craft feather, water bottle. Um, you can use whatever you have at home to try out all these different stamps. So if you want to take a moment to pause the video and go look around your house to see um, what you can use for a stamp, um, go ahead and do so and then bring them right back because we are going to be using all those items to try out our different stamps that we have today. So if you have found your items, let's go ahead and get started by making sure that we have acrylic paint. And I'm just going to try these out one at a time and just explain what each of these are. So I'm just going to put all my random objects right here. Again, there's no right or wrong to um, what objects you are using. This is just to try out um, what we have, what works, maybe doesn't work best. Again, that's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and put my hair ties there. And here we go. All right, so the first, one of the first items that I found in my home was a Q-tip. And the nice thing about these Q-tips is you can just easily take it and just add dots onto your picture. And the less paint you have, the more textured it does start to look. So I'm just going to add some random dots to my picture using my Q-tip. Maybe I want to use it more like a brush and have it brushed like so. So you could use the stamp method or brush method. And this is me just using a Q-tip. I can even add something interesting drawn with my Q-tip. So that's a Q-tip that I found in my home. I also have a cotton ball. It's kind of chunky, so maybe I can just split it in half a little bit and just see how that works. So I'll just use pieces of my cotton ball. Now I'm just going to dip it in the orange this time. And as you can see, it's a little hard to see actually, so I'll get a little bit more. If I take my paint and press it like a stamp, I'll get these nice little interesting lines on my paper. I'm going to also use it like a brush and brush it like so. And that's me using a cotton ball of a nice stringy effect. I like using it like a stamp. But maybe if you wanted to use a full cotton ball, which I do have over on the side here, so let me grab that. Maybe if you wanted to use just a full cotton ball and don't um, rip it, you can do that as well. So I can take my cotton ball and just press it down like this. That way it just blends a little bit more. I can spread it with colors. Again, using it like a stamp is just going up and down. Using like a brush is side to side. And that's me using a cotton ball, whether it's ripped in half or still intact. Alrighty, what else do we have here? I have a sock. I promise I washed it <laughs> before using it. I can try using a sock as a stamp and brush as well. So here's this. I'm going to go for green. Now I'm just going to press down and see how my sock turns out. So once more, um, pressing up and down is using it like a stamp. Brushing it back and forth is like a brush. It'll be interesting to see what sort of um, image we come up with using all the different items that we have at home. All right, so that is me using a sock, and I will definitely throw this one out because I don't know I don't need it any longer. <clears throat> I have bubble wrap. I'm going to use my bubble wrap. I'm going to use the blue for this. And I can even just um, paint onto it with a paintbrush or I can just grab it like so. I just dip in my paint 
can see what it comes with. This. Oh, what I come up with, excuse me. So I'm just tapping it, it's got that nice bubble effect. You can also brush it back and forth using long swift motions or just short, quick ones. Quite like the bubble wrap, I think it creates nice texture. Now if you wanted to also use your bubble wrap, you could just lay it flat like this and paint right on top of it with a paintbrush. And you can do this for all of your items. I can just paint the top like this and then press it down onto my paper to create a nice bubble effect. Ooh, that looks really cool. I think I'm gonna do some up here with my red dots as well. Maybe I wanna mix more colors too. Ooh, I really like the bubble wrap. I'm gonna add some greens to that. So I can add some green and some dark blue. Press down and press gently because if you press too hard, then those bubbles are going to pop. I really like the bubble wrap. I think that's one of my favorites that we've used so far. All right, I do have a dryer sheet um, and we can try using that. Maybe I want to just rip it in half and see um, using it like a stamp or brush or then also trying the painting on method. I'll try with purple first. Make sure not too much is on there. And I can just dab it. Sometimes it's better to not have too much paint on there, but it's looking actually quite nice. I can also brush back and forth to see how that works. Ooh, I like the textures in this one too. Okay, if I'm gonna dip it and tap on my paper like a stamp or brush back and forth like a paintbrush. But maybe I wanna do the same thing that I did with my bubble wrap. Maybe I just wanna paint right onto it. So I'll get my paint, making sure that my brush is nice and clean. I'm just gonna clean off my brush real quickly. I'll get some lavender. I'm just gonna paint right on top of my, oh, it's hard to see my head's in the way. I'm gonna paint right on top of my dryer sheet. And then press down. This might get a little bit messy because um, there are holes in it, but you've got a nice texture right there. Ooh, I like that one too. The bubble wrap and the dryer sheet have so far been my favorite. Really like those. Awesome, and that was me using a dryer sheet. All right, your hands might be a little bit messy and that is okay. I have this metal scraping sponge. I did cut it into four sections, so this is a lot smaller than what it normally is. And again, I can just dip it into the paint or I can um, paint right onto it. I'll just take that paint and I'm just gonna tap it. to create a cool texture there too. I can brush it back and forth. It's a little scratchy though. So for those who are a little bit sensitive to these, um, those sort of sounds, be extra careful. Yeah, I can brush it back or I can tap. And depending how much paint you have on your sponge will determine um, the texture as well. So there's not a whole lot of paint on this sponge. It's creating this nice splatter effect. Ooh, I just feel like each of these that we keep using get better and better. So, so far I really like the bubble wrap, the dryer sheet, and this sponge. All right. I also have, so this was attached to um, a metal rack that I have in my bathroom, but it just keeps falling and I really don't need it anymore. So I'm just gonna try using that. Maybe I'll just use red with it. And I feel like for this one, I can probably just swirl like this and have it stick to my paper and use it like a stamp. Again, the more paint you have, the blotchier it's gonna be. Less paint you have, 
Maybe a little bit more textures will appear on it. I haven't used orange, so maybe we'll use some orange right there too. So I'm just using this, I guess it's like a suction cup, I guess. So I'm just adding that to my picture. I feel like the orange really made my um, picture stand out a bit more. Add a little bit more orange. This one's fun. I really like this one. All right, and so there is this um, part right here. All right, I do have um, a used rag. Um, it was a washcloth. I can grab that and see what I come up with using this as well. And I can just tap it on my picture. And because this one has different textures than the other um, sponge that I used, um, it does create those different textures. And I highly recommend making sure you don't have a whole, whole lot of paint for those textures. But again, there's no right or wrong to how you do this process art project. Because this is uniquely yours. And I'm just splattering it here and there. And I can even mix some of those colors with other um, other colors that I used with different um, stamps or brushes. I can brush that back and forth if I want. This is turning out to be really cool. And again, I had no idea how this was going to turn out and what um, objects I would like or dislike. Quite like all of them. I, I do like this one as well. I have a plastic bag that was um, used to hold um, I think it was an onion I got at the store. Um, I tied it in a knot though, so it's a little bit more durable. You can use the end of that easily or just the side. Yeah, keep it, I'll put it back in the knot. And make sure it's nice and crinkled. I can grab that, get some paint. And again, I like to not have too much of it. But I can just tap it like a stamp or brush it back and forth like a brush. Let's see what I come up with. I'm using dark purple, so we'll get some of that dark purple on here. And I'm just tapping on my picture. This is really cool. I think I really like a lot of these objects that I'm using to create my picture. Have you found a favorite one yet that you just keep using and using? Definitely let me know in the comments below. Or you can let us know at FeboKidsArtAcademy.com. I want some dark purples up here. I don't have too many of those dark purples. You see how I'm just brushing it back and forth like a brush. Going really quickly. Not thinking too hard about this. I'm just having some fun. I have a few more things. I have a feather and it's quite like a brush so I'm gonna try using yellow for this. I can use this like a stamp to just press on my paper. I recommend not using a feather that you find outside just because of the germs that could be on it. Uh, this was a craft feather. I'm just using like a stamp, but then I can take it like a brush and brush back and forth like this. We're creating some really fun images here. Again, have you found a brush that you really like to use? Maybe you found something that I haven't used on my picture. You should definitely let me know. I am always willing to try brand new things. I'm just gonna tap here too. All right, and that was the feather. The water bottle. Now this could be a little bit tricky just because um, it is a big area. So if you find that it's easier to use a paint brush to paint that paint on. Um, I recommend doing that. I'm just gonna take my red. I don't have too much red on my paper, so I'm gonna take some red. 
my paintbrush and just paint the bottom of my water bottle. I can also use the side where these ridges are. I'm just going to take my water bottle and I'm just going to press it onto my picture. You might need a little bit more paint for this. I'm going to get just a glob of it on. I'm going to create these nice dots that make a ring. Maybe I'll add some orange to that too. How fun, that was really cool. All right, and that was the water bottle. All right, I do have a hair tie, so I can just dip that into the paint as well. I'll go for light blue, and maybe I'll add some dark blue to it, and just brush it, and maybe just splatter like so. I can pick some of that paint up and spread. You want to get back some more blue and just tap. Maybe I'll grab some red too and do that. All right, last thing that I have is I have a lid to um, some sort of bottle. Really like the um, ridges on the edge right here. Might be hard. Um, it might not show up as well if you do dip it into the paint. So let me just grab some yellow mixed with my red, so it kind of looks like fire. I'm going to make sure that there's quite a bit of paint on there. And let's go back and get some red. And then I can just roll that onto my paper. And so it creates um, some really interesting textures right there. And if you have too much paint, it won't do the same effect, but that's what's fun about trying these sort of things. All right, and those are all the objects that I have found in my home. And this is what I came up with. Um, so I think my favorite that I used was definitely um, this sponge right here. So I really liked using this. I liked the dryer sheet that created a fun texture. Definitely the bubble wrap. Bubble wrap really helped to make that picture pop a little bit more. And this washcloth, random washcloth that I had. I even like the um, small suction cup too. Um, probably my least favorite was maybe the cotton ball and sock, but again, it still was able to achieve this really fun, interesting picture. Um, so yeah, make sure that you clean up your area um, and wash your hands and clean those items. You can toss them if you want to, um, or you can wash them as best you can. You can keep them and use them for other projects as well. So um, yeah, if you don't want to throw them out, you definitely don't have to. Really great job on your pictures. I'm going to hold mine up so you all can see. It's amazing and it can be any way that you want. But again, I love finding those different objects that you can use at home to use as stamps or brushes um, to create really fun abstract art pieces like this. Um, definitely share your pictures online either on our Instagram page or our Fibo Village page on Facebook. Um, and let us know in the comments below um, what objects you used at home to create your image. And we would love to see what you um, came up with on your pictures. And thank you for joining me today. Hope you had so much fun. And we'll see you next time at Fibo Kids Art Academy. Bye!